Die Hard with a Vengeance saw the welcome return of John McTiernan as director along with Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson and Jeremy Irons. I would argue that Die Hard 3 might have the best cast out of any Die Hard movie. When a bomb goes off on the streets of New York, a man calling himself Simon calls the police department and asks for McLean. And he starts giving McLean impossible tasks to complete around the city. And he says that if McLean isn't able to complete them, he'll detonate more bombs. Die Hard 3 changed a lot of things about the series. For one, it's not on Christmas. They were like, fuck Christmas. It's a hot summer day. McLean has a hangover. He has a headache and all he wants is some aspirin. And it's not in a trapped, claustrophobic location like a building or an airport. Port. It's the entire city of New York. So John McTiernan took his characters and sent them on a merry chase through New York for two hours. Die Hard 3 is fucking awesome. I love this movie. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's my favorite Die Hard sequel. Strangely enough, before Die Hard 5 came out, this was actually the worst reviewed Die Hard movie. What? I'll never understand the critical response to this movie. I am honestly baffled by it. I think this movie is incredibly good, and it's, it's so good, especially all these years later. This movie still is, like, super well-made. There's only a few shots that aged kind of poorly, most of them involving some explosions and making sure that Willis and Jackson are both on screen during those explosions, but basically all of the car chases, the shootouts, the stunts, it was all done with practical effects, real people throwing themselves all over the streets of New York, and it's awesome. It still holds up really well. The history of where Die Hard scripts start and where they end is always very interesting. The first one was based off of a book. This one was based off a script called Simon Says that was actually transformed into a Die Hard script by changing some of the character names. And what's so great about this film, amongst many things, is its pace. This film throws you into it from the very start. I mean, the first explosion happens within the first minute and McLean is instantly in a truck with the other cops going to his first task. They've already had the conversation about what his first task is. He's already said, are you fucking kidding me? You really want me to do that? So we're just thrown into this situation with McLean doing something incredibly humiliating and embarrassing and offensive, forced to do that because Simon is saying he should. But since this film denies us the scene where he looks at his captain and says, are you fucking serious? You really want me to do that? We're just thrown into it. So when Samuel L. Jackson as Zeus sees McLean wearing this very offensive sign, he's like, I gotta get this guy out of here, otherwise somebody's about to die. And the film pulls no punches when it comes to its characters and the complexities of this situation. Samuel L. Jackson pulls off a miracle in this movie because you have one of the most likable protagonists ever in McLean. And Jackson is technically the quote-unquote sidekick, but he's just as fun, just as likable, and just as interesting as a person as McLean is. He's not just a guy who helps out McLean, maybe drives the truck or something like Marion in Indy 4. And he's not there for comic relief either. He's a very active character, and he always has an opinion, and he never has a problem speaking his opinion. These two characters thrown into this situation is one of the reasons this movie works so well for me. I love watching them argue. I love watching them get closer. I love watching them work problems out together. All of the obstacles that Simon throws in their way, like having to drive multiple blocks in a very short time, going to the park and trying to dodge civilians who are just walking around, or the water bottle math problem. All of it is really, really fun. Which leads me to something else I love about this movie and kind of respect about it actually, is that McLean doesn't really kill anyone for a while. It takes a while for him to actually kill a guy, which is weird for a Die Hard movie. And, and you would think, well, that would make it boring, but it really fucking doesn't. Watching them run through the city trying to complete all these obstacles, it's extremely exciting. And he hasn't even drawn his gun yet. This movie took a lot of risks, actually, just taking it away from what people expected in a Die Hard movie and, and making it be about tests and obstacles and a game of wits. And something McTiernan has always done well, but he does especially well in Die Hard 3, is keep his actors in the action. If you have a frame that showcases action, find a way to put the actor in that same frame before you cut away. It makes it feel visceral, intense, in your fucking face. I really miss John McTiernan directing action movies because honestly, nobody did it like him. He's one of the few directors that was able to make handheld look really great. Him and Michael Mann are fantastic with handheld. There's a lot of handheld in Die Hard 3, and it adds to the propulsion of the excitement. After Alan Rickman as Hans Gruber, 
Gruber, Jeremy Irons, as his brother is my favorite villain in the entire series. He's excellent in this movie, and what voice would you want as an evil guy on the other end of a line telling you to do something horrible than Jeremy Irons? As far as evil voices on the other end of a phone, it's Kiefer Sutherland in Phone Booth and Jeremy Irons in Die Hard 3. And I know everybody likes the elevator fight scene in Winter Soldier, but way before that, McClane took out a lot of dudes in an elevator in beautiful, gory fashion. Something else that Die Hard 3 has is potentially the most, oh shit, kill in the series. The pacing of Die Hard 3 is relentless. This film moves, it never takes a break. The characters are always doing something that's investing, you're always interested in the action, and it's very funny and likable. The only issue that I really have with the film is unfortunately the final 10 minutes. There's this tacked on action scene involving a helicopter. McLean just runs out into the open without any cover. Jeremy Irons just chooses not to fire at McLean and instead smiles at him so McLean can shoot a power line into the helicopter and then it can blow up. This tacked on ending is very weak. And it's the only thing that keeps Die Hard 3 from being on a similar level for me as the first film. I love this movie that much. There is an alternate ending for Die Hard 3 which some people think is considerably better. I'm one of those people. In this ending, the villain actually gets away. He escapes, and McLean tracks him down to another country, and they have this game of wits at this restaurant. McLean has a bazooka. He's taken the directional arrows off, and he puts it down on the table and forces Simon to answer a bunch of riddles, and every time a question is answered, he spins that bazooka around, and eventually, Simon kills himself. <laughs> And McLean reveals that he was wearing a flak jacket underneath the entire time, says yippee motherfucker, and walks off. That is a fucking ending for Die Hard 3. Now, the studio and some fans, in retrospect, have seen this, and they said that um, he was a bit cruel. It kind of made McLean seem heartless, not like a police officer. It made him seem like he had become a villain. That was actually the point. The, the writer has said in the years past that was the whole point of the matter. He doesn't have Holly anymore, he barely sees his kids, and this villain basically drove him over the deep end. So now he's doing something that is villainous. That's a very complex ending, and I appreciate that. That ending has real balls to me. Like, that feels extremely risky, and I love it for that, and I wish that it was in the movie, honestly. I really kind of do. Still, except for that final 10 minutes feeling very tacked on, Die Hard 3 is one of my favorite 90s action movies. In fact, it's just one of my favorite action movies, period. I'm gonna give Die Hard with a Vengeance an A-. minus. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to my review of Live Free or Die Hard very soon, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.